habeas corpus return of a child. A writ of habeas corpus is used to force a party to return or release a child to the person who has a superior right to possession of the child. The writ can be used to enforce a court-ordered right of possession or a legal right of possession when possession is not governed by court order. A writ of habeas corpus should be granted when the relator shows that he or she is entitled to custody of the child by virtue of a valid court order. The right to possession may not be relitigated in the habeas corpus hearing. The relator, the person who files the writ, is entitled to an issuance of the writ immediately upon showing of his or her right to custody. Upon proof of the bare legal right to possession, the grant of the writ of habeas corpus should be automatic, immediate, and menstrual. The trial court is not permitted to consider the child's best interests nor go beyond the immediate welfare of the child in a habeas proceeding. Mandamus relief may be issued to correct the erroneous denial of habeas corpus relief. Mandamus is a appellate court proceeding to correct the error of the trial judge. When a party such as a parent establishes his or her legal right to possession of a child, the trial court's authority to refuse habeas corpus relief is very limited. Evidence raising a serious immediate question concerning a child's welfare must be presented before the trial court has any discretion to deny the writ. A serious immediate question requires a situation that, without the court's immediate action, would subject the child to immediate danger or physical or emotional harm. Any order made pursuant to Texas Family Code 157.374 must include a court's finding of a serious and immediate question of harm or danger to the child. How do you file a writ of habeas corpus when you have a valid court order in effect? A petition for writ of habeas corpus seeking to compel the return of a child under a valid court order must show the following. There is a valid subsisting court order governing the possession of the child. The relator is currently entitled to possession under that order and the respondent is illegally restraining the child in violation of a valid court order. First, the relator must establish that the order governing possession of the child is currently valid. Generally, mere proof of a final or temporary order of possession will be sufficient. However, the order of possession must have been granted in a proceeding in which the parties were given notice and opportunity to be heard. Further, an agreement between the parties to alter court order of possession that has not been approved or adopted by the court is not sufficient to establish a superior right of possession. Second, the relator must establish that they are currently entitled to possession under a valid court order. In a habeas corpus proceeding, the court must determine who at the time has the legal right to custody of the child. Third, the relator must establish that the respondent is Ill illegally restraining the child in violation of the valid court order. So when you have a final order of possession in Texas, generally you'll have a primary and you'll have a visiting parent. And the times in which a visiting parent generally files a habeas will be during the summer period of possession. The standard possession order defaults to the entire month of July if notice is not given for alternative weeks during the summer. Every July in my law firm, generally we have several habeases that are filed because the primary parent will not allow the child to go for their visitation for the summer. Uh, generally, by filing the writs of habeas, uh, you're going to get compliance with the order going forward. Many times the primary parent says the child does not want to go and then the lawyer on the other side will say well the child can choose which is um, wrong uh, most 95% of the time the child cannot choose the child has to go and um, so that is the fact pattern where the non-primary parent will usually get a habeas. The primary parent it usually involves one parent thinking that the primary is not taking care of the child and then they don't turn them back after a weekend period of possession. They keep them for several weeks. Those are generally heard throughout the year. 
and we file uh, frequently many of those. Now, if you don't have a court order and you have someone else holding your child, which, which is typically a relative, a grandparent or um, an aunt or an uncle, the family code provides relief in this fact pattern. A petition for writ of habeas corpus seeking to compel the return of a child when no court order is in effect must show the following. There is no court order governing possession of the child. The relator is a parent of the child. The respondent is a non-parent. And the respondent is illegally restraining the child. First, the relator must establish that no court order governs possession of the child by asserting that no order has been rendered or that an earlier order is void or invalid to support a superior right of possession. An order of possession that was granted without reasonable notice and opportunity to be heard such as an ex parte temporary restraining order is not sufficient to support a superior right of possession for purposes of a habeas corpus proceeding. Further, a relator can establish that no court order governs possession of the child by asserting that an earlier order of possession has been terminated. Second, the relator must establish that they are parents of the child. When no court order governs possession of the child, only a parent has a legal right of possession under the law. Third, the relator should assert that the respondent is a non-parent. A court is not permitted to use a habeas corpus proceeding to adjudicate the right of possession between two parents when no court order of possession exists. Fourth, the relator must establish that the respondent is illegally restraining the child in violation of the parent's right of possession under the law. The relief available under a habeas corpus. How procedurally do these hearings play out? A petition for habeas corpus is filed in order to compel the return of a child who's being illegally restrained to the party who has a superior right to possession of the child under a court order or by virtue of parentage. The two primary forms of relief to accomplish this um, this objective is the writ of habeas corpus, but then also there's what's called a writ of attachment that can go with the habeas corpus. So the habeas corpus, what that will do is that will cause an order to appear to be issued by the court. So when you file the writ of habeas corpus, you do not file that writ and then call the police and then go to someone's residence or meet them somewhere or go to the school and then automatically get the child. You have to serve the person who's holding the child with a notice of hearing and then at the notice of hearing the person is required to show cause that they are not illegally restraining the child. So if it is a parent and the parent interpretation of the order is that they have possession at that particular time or maybe there were some prerequisites to having a standard possession order such as drug testing that was not accomplished, then in these fact patterns, the court will entertain procedurally some type of obstacle that may be placed by the person who is uh, ordered to bring forth the body, the child. And so at that hearing, if they cannot show that they uh, have a defense to the keeping of the child, then the child is turned over Typically, you can get attorney's fees for doing this. There is no sanction. Or there's no punishment. There's no uh, jail time in a writ of habeas corpus. It's return of the child. And then in addition to that, there is uh, an attorney fee award that you can prove up. Now, with the writ of habeas corpus, if there's a danger that the child may um, be moving out of the state, a parent or a... Um, non-parent has stated that they're going to another region you can file with the writ of habeas corpus a writ of attachment the writ of attachment is something that if the court issues it will command a sheriff or constable to take immediate possession of the child and deliver the child to the court or a person or agency designated by the court writs of attachment are used when you have drug drug issues you have parents who are in hotels doing drugs when you have non-parents who have uh, taken um, 
custody of the children and are driving up north somewhere to another state. Uh, I've seen it where a writ of attachment has been filed in Texas and given to the Arkansas uh, State uh, Highway Patrol and they were able to get someone stopped and uh, have those children driven back to the border of Texas. So um, the writ of attachment, you would have to verify that as you file it. So a habeas is not necessarily required to be verified, to be sworn to, uh, where you submit an affidavit in front of a notary. However, it's recommended that you do it. And so if you do a writ of attachment, then you will need to spell out uh, very detailed, dangerous situations, uh, generally in the um, environment that you have nowadays with the police, the courts and the police are hesitant to go in and strong arm a child from someone. Uh, they need verification. And then with a the verification, if you have pictures, you have texts, you have social media, uh, you'd want to attach that and try to verify that this person has bragged about leaving the jurisdiction and that they're never going to let you see your child again. And so that's something that as a caveat, I would uh, look towards in the writ of attachment. So writ of attachments are uh, less common than just the writ of habeas. Usually a parent refuses to turn over or they're not there during the initial period of possession uh, at the tur turnover time at July 1st at 6 p.m and uh, they think that there are no consequences because perhaps the other parent has missed out on a couple of visitations and so they believe they've waived their summer possession so generally compliance will come in the form of a letter and that we're coming the next day to pick up the child and then occasionally you'll get some that just won't do it until you have the writ of habeas but the child's otherwise not in a dangerous situation they're with the parent a parent just doesn't want to turn them over to the other parent for their summer period of possession. It's the same thing with a non-primary who has taken the child but still lives locally and refuses to turn the child over because of some accusations of alienation or because of someone's new significant other and there's a disciplinary incident and the child for the short term does not want to go back. The writ of habeas corpus is a writ that under the Texas Family Law uh, Code, you can also file with domestications of foreign orders. So if you are a resident of another state, and as a resident of another state, if you have a valid order, you have to domesticate that order in Texas to get a Texas case number, and then you would file a writ of habeas corpus. So I have domesticated orders from other states such as Oklahoma and Louisiana where a parent would have possession, uh, a right of superior right of possession to a child and the um, parent, another parent has moved to the greater Houston area and refuses to give the child back. So we'll domesticate that foreign order file a writ of habeas, and then as we do that, uh, we'll take you in front of the judge and ask that the child be turned over. Uh, my name is Michael Busby. I am a Houston family law and divorce attorney. If you like my content, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Mm -hmm.